Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Wall Review for tonight, Monday, September 21st. The aftermath of Night of Champions taking place tonight from Loreno, Texas. Before I get any further, how you doing? Get my new Amazon cash in there. A $10 sale last week at the WWE shop on t shirts. I'm a big Amazon cash. I got my salt pan. I already got this from a little while ago, so it matches. Anyway. Comes to the wall after the NOC. It was okay coming out of Night of Champions, which was just okay as well. Once again, like Night of Champions, not much outstanding tonight. There were some decent things that happened. You had a wee match. Not actually, a lot of wee matches. That's what happens, and I have to pay my views. You have lots of wee matches. And some build up for uh, and Hell to Cell. Not much, but still. Plus, you had a heel turn that. Some people, including myself, suspect it was going to happen. We thought it was going to happen last night, but it happened tonight. Plus, we saw the key, the Demon Kane, who returned last night at the pay-per-view. Wayne, again, as you see in my subtitle, that he made Seth's night, once again, a rough one. Now, let's get started with, very interesting to kick off with the Wyatt family. Yay! For two reasons. One, it's cool to have not just having the Wyatt family at all kick off the show, too. Not having anyone that's the authority kicking off war. So, yay. Some other than authorities, good enough to begin with. But having the Wyatt's open up was pretty interesting. Coming off their victory last night over Dean Ambrose, Woman Reigns, and their mystery partner, Chris Jericho. Which was a what? She went some more Joe even some. I even said that. I was like, Watching it, and I said again my uh, my review last night of, uh, of Night of Champions, I was like, Yoko was a random. Storyline-wise, makes sense. Because Yoko said his bounce with Wyatt's, but it was just a little bit of a random. And I'm a fan of Yoko's. Not just because he debuted on my birthday. So Yoko didn't pan out. He kind of turned heels, didn't get, didn't get along. He blind tagged himself in after Woman apparently had to win. With the Superman punch, two of them to take down Strowman. And the spear. The joke got beat. So uh, there you go. So Wyatt was still in the victory. They're like, the uh, woman, we tried to warn you. We tried to beat it out of you. We still keep coming back for more, huh? Some, they never learn. And then as Wyatt was talking more stuff, here comes Reigns' music coming down the system, sound system, coming down from the back with nobody. Just him. He's like, hey, I want you, Bray, one on one. Send your. I forget you. His biggins. Yeah, biggins to the back. I want you one on one. Well, it wasn't really a match. Woman's like, we don't need a ref. I just want to fight. And that's what we got. A big ball ensued between. Bray and Woman. Woman had the upper hand at first with the Superman punch. But then Bray came flying back and hit some big moves. They were boy on the barricade. I meant the turnbuckle. But as Bray started coming back, Woman from a partner Harper and Strowman, who they were slowly going backstage. They didn't take long to get involved as well. They went back to the ring to save Bray in the three on one numbers game. Was on until Dean Ambrose came to the rescue. But he would get clobbered by the numbers game as well. And then Randy Orton's music would hit. Storyline wise, makes sense. Orton was attacked by Wyatt, thinking that he was going to partner for uh, Wallens' his former shield mates, Ambrose and Reigns. And he couldn't take down Strowman. You know, Strowman got beat up a little bit, but he stood up. Even when he got knocked out of the ring by Reigns. Even that didn't phase him. He is a monster. It takes multiple hits to get him down. One little hit doesn't touch him. It takes like a barrage of hits. So there you go. Despite the numbers game being in the favor of the Wyatts, the numbers game was in the favor of Ambrose and Reigns, who got themselves a new third man. Because I was like last night, if Jericho didn't work, they're going to keep trying to get a third guy involved. Well, it's Orton. I thought it'd be a six-man tag tonight, but they could be saving it for Hell in a Cell, or even better, 
the house show next week, and MSG that they're broadcasting on the network with Big Show 29 Lesnar's the main event. And this, they added a new match for that tonight, which I'll get to that in a second. And it's a cool way to entice the people because I love the Beats in the East special, that live house show from Japan. It felt so good to see two hours of wrestling without the garbage. So I watched it with two hours again, not three. Anyway, mentioned earlier, it was a night of rematches. And it would start with Corporate Kane in the office of the Authority with Seth looking for him. And he saw Corporate Kane. And Corporate Kane was like, I don't remember what happened last night. I didn't attack you last night. What does that remind you of? When one guy plays two different characters who don't know the other one exists. Abyss and Joseph Park, anyone? Don't really like whipping off other companies. Who's the copy Ring of Honor by having a two champion man with Wallens being the Tell the U.S. champ and the war champion like Jay Lethal is the TV champ and the war champ. At least Jay Lethal kept both his titles over the weekend. And then the recopies TNA by having Kane play Corporate Kane and Demon Kane as two separate characters without knowing it's the same guy. So I hated that whole Joseph Parker Biss thing. I was like, everyone knows he's the same fucking person, yeah, he doesn't know it. You know, Joseph Park thinks a biz is a separate person. Uh, you play the same guy. That's what this whole Kane thing turned into. And Corporate Kane made a rematch for tonight. Cena against Rollins for the U.S. Championship. And while we're on that trend of rematches from NLC, how about a rematch from the pre-show? It's the... It's no longer the Cosmic Wasteland. That's the catchphrase now. Welcome to the Cosmic Wasteland. Their new name. The new name of the stable involving Stardust and the Ascension. It's now known as the Astro Alliance. Interesting. They took on the men. The men they beat last night. Neville and the Lucha Dragons. Start off rough with Sinkov. He botched the move bad. I've said this a couple times. It doesn't matter who's under the Sinkov mask. They botch. It was the old guy that plays in call or a new guy, Hootie Girl, plays in call They botched. Like, Sin Cole is going for the top role. And not only did he fail badly and botched it badly, he barely treats his name doing that. I was like, he fucked up. He fucked up. And the Cosmic Wasteland, aka Team Astro Alliance, they fed on that. They fed on Sin Cole's mistake and isolated him in the corner and focusing on that leg. With the Ascension, well, I'm glad they're getting kind of over, over with this gimmick with Cody Rhodes slash Stardust and this Astro Alliance. What, are they changing it because they found out Custom Wasteland was a porn site? Kind of like where they had to change the Submission Alliance, the PCB, who may no longer be a team. Anyway, after the uh, isolation and sick card, the hot tags came into boat. Kalisto and Devil. Never came in with some high flying moves. Try to set up a red arrow. But Victor, who got involved in the ante last night, got involved again. Blocking Neville's attempt. And after Neville got taken down, started working on Neville. And trying to do a gory special. Submission stall does dead. Came down to those two until Neville got the hot tag to Kalisto. Coming to the house of fire with some big nasty moves. Leading up to his finishing move, which I love. This need to pronounce the name right. The Salina del Sol. And one, two, three, victory for Luther Dragon to Neville. Getting a piece of revenge after losing last night at Nine Champions. A little bit of redemption for the loss on the pre-show. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go with that. Decent fun matchup to open up Wall. First, we're matching more after that segment involving the Whites and uh, Warren, former friends and enemies, you know what I'm saying? Warren and Ambrose. And of course, we're all joining in too. Next up, we have Ryback trying to recover from his loss on the IC Championship last night against Kevin Owens, who was at ringside, commentating as Ryback took on. 
Despite some great offense from both Dallas, who needs a repackage badly, his character's gotten so annoying to the point of the fans just booing to get him to go away. It's not heal heat, it's go away heat. That's bad. Very, very bad. So despite Bo Dallas, we all knew Bo was going to get Bo demolished as back. Got some big offense in, big moves, including, of course, the meat hook and the shell shock and one, two, three victory for Wyback. But before he was able to celebrate, the IC champion Kevin Owens came in from behind and attacked Wyback, started beating up on him, and tried to set up a pop up power ball, which he didn't do last night after raking the eyes when he was being set up for the shell shock. But then Wyback got out of it by closing him. And one Owens won. I hate people made that phrase up. One Owens won. I say fight Owens fight. Then on to our next affair. The celebration for Charlotte becoming the new Divas Champion for real after that camp out last week. That's a that was that's a big negative about seeing Charlotte lose last week. We all knew she was gonna win again last night. For real. They just wanted you to pay nine ninety nine for the network. I I said that last week. On my mom review, I said, Charlotte, you think you won? Fuck you, you lose. Buy the network and see it for real for ten nine for nine ninety nine. That's what happened. It was still a fun moment though to see Charlotte there with Paige and Becky. Very emotional to see her with the dad in there celebrating. But in the back of my mind, I was like, Is the Paige heel turn gonna happen to me? It's been lots of speculation around the wrestling IWC and that wrestling community that Paige was going to turn heel. It makes sense on a storyline basis because of the fact that Paige has been losing lately. She was the one that started the Divas Revolution, the one that won the rally against the Bellas when no one else wanted to. Paige was the one that kind of started the rally to take down the Bella Reign. But in recent weeks, she's been getting passed over as she's been losing a lot while seeing. Charlotte should succeed and become Divas Champion. And you can tell by the look in Paige's eye. During this segment, I was like, the heel turn may happen tonight. It did. But she didn't attack Charlotte with her physical actions. No. She turned heel by attacking with her words. I don't care if this is a rook shoot or a wheel shoot. There were some weird facts almost. The majority of them were real facts in this shoot that Paige did. Said, oh, Charlotte's a champion. You're like, you're taking all this admiration. And you didn't want to be your dad. You want to be more like me. I was the Divas champion when I first came in here. And you think you're the champion? It's going to change this place. You're going to lose it as quickly. And it'll be back to the way it was. With Team Bella winning Supreme. You're just a placeholder. She started managing all the other divas. She's like, Team Bad. They're not. They're just a flash in the pan. And Team Bella. You know how they got in here. Having sex with Daniel Bryan and John Cena. And she's like, Natalie, where are you? Do you see even work here? That is true. I wish Natty got a big push. It is kind of sad that Natty's been passed over. During this whole entire Divas Revolution, Natty's been passed over. Although we would see it tonight because of this. But the, the, the phrase that kind of crossed the line was when Paige went off on Charlotte saying, the only reason why you're in this company is because of your own man. That pissed Charlotte off to no end and Becky was trying to hold her back. So, it's been... The, you know, the seeds planted for the possible PCP breakup. And I think we just saw it tonight. It's no longer PCP, just CB. That's a bad name if they decided to still be an alliance, but I think the P and PCB is out of it. You know, Paige full on heel, you know, rooting solid celebration. We spoiled even further as Team Bella would add more salt to the rune. As Nikki's like, hey, Charlotte had. Charlotte, poor, poor Charlotte. What are your BFFs, apparently? Your so-called BFF left you high and dry. And I will invoke my rematch. 
and I will become the Divas Champ again after ending my long reign. But tonight, you take on my sister, the woman you pinned last Monday, thinking you were the Divas Champion. In that cop out finish, Brie Bella. And it was a fun match for what it was. You know, it was decent because Charlotte, once again, the injured leg that she apparently injured, storyline or legit, was targeted by Brie Bella, like her sister targeted it last night during their match for the Divas Championship. With some great chops, great moves, Charlotte was trying to get back in the game after being targeted with the knee injury. Because it was like, why would Charlotte win the Divas Championship and lose and have that she wanted? We all knew she was going to, because sometimes we have seen that in WWE walls after pay-per-views, it's like, uh, you see the new champions, lose. The night after they won. But thankfully, Charlotte came back from behind like she did last night. With some big moves, including kicks with a good knee. And there were some insecurities and a net breaker. Followed by, of course, the spear and the figure eight and the tap out for Brave as Charlotte in her first match as the champion, even though it was a title match. Defeated Brie Bella, even with a page thing. I think, uh, when it comes to who's going to challenge Charlotte next, I think Brie will probably enforce a rematch clause on a wall. Or even better, the MSG event next week. But we already have a rematch set for next week's MSG special on the network from the Champions. So, But I think Nikki will enforce a rematch clause first and then Paige will get a shot. And then, here's what also should happen. Sasha Banks should get a shot. They need to put Sasha Banks and Charlotte on the main roster for the Divas Championship. I've said this a million times, but Charlotte and Bayley's opponent at NXT TakeOver was fat, because I cannot wait for that Iron Women match. Sasha, I never get sick of those two wrestling. Their matches on NXT were amazing. Please, WWE, you have some bad booking in the past and bad decisions. But what would make up for everything that happened last couple weeks, especially at Night Champions, please put Charlotte and Sasha in a match for the Divas Championship, probably after NXT TakeOver. So let Charlotte finish her food, feud with Nikki, and have some, some, one of a solution, resolutions where with Paige, and have Sasha have a match with Bailey, and then have Sasha and Charlotte fight, maybe Hound a Cell, even better Survivor Series. And let the match at Survivor Series for the Divas Championship be longer than the match last year for the Divas Championship when Brie started her reign as Divas Champion when she delivered the kiss of death to AJ to help Nikki win. So there you go. Make it happen, WWE. Sasha Charlotte for the Divas Championship and let them have the match that they fucking deserve. Give them all the time in the world and show the main roster what the true Divas Revolution looks like. We get two badass divas from NXT the proper time to finally shine on the main roster. Make it happen. Now on to our next scenario. Let's mix up. Sheamus still fuming after being thrown out of his chance to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion by trying to catch the money in the bank until Kane got involved as he took on Mark Henry. Okay, match between these two guys. Mark Henry trying to look good with his power moves. He is powerful. What hell? Oh, he is the world's strongest player, uh, man. Trying to beat Sheamus on the outside. Trying to deliver his big splashes in the corner. And, of course, pulling on Sheamus' hair. Covering the you look stupid chance. But despite Henry's best efforts to do his power moves, ball kick out of nowhere. And then it it took not one but two bull kicks to keep Mark Henry down. And it was a 2 3 victory for Sheamus. Trying to get his momentum back up. I've said this last week, I'll say it again. Sheamus, if he cashes in, or should I say, when he cashes in, I hope he becomes the third guy to unsuccessfully win the title from cashing in, like Cena and Sandow. I hate that Sandow's name's in there. And he's never been the same since. So, uh,. There you go. Now on to our next matchup. I think next up was the six-man tag. 
because we had a six-man tag. I thought it would be, you know, the Wyatts and uh, them guys taking on Ambrose, Wyatt, Reigns, and Orton. But instead, the six-man tag tonight was the New Day, the Tag Team Champions, Kofi and Big E, Team Yerman Rusev against Ziggler, and the Dudley Boys. Now, remember that we match I was telling you about that was made tonight for the MSG house card that's going to air on the network? The rematch in question is the rematch for the tag team title match involving the Dudleys and New Day, stemming from the DQ from last night's title match when Xavier Woods got involved. I might have forgot to mention in my review last night that Xavier went through a table. Thus, he was like clutching his back when he came in. Make this a tables match. <laughs> there had more reasons to watch it. Like I said earlier, I love the Beast and East special from Japan. I'm glad they're doing more of these house show live events. It's awesome. It's a break from the norm. You know, feels fresh because the house shows are good. And to have them live like that, it's cool. Especially from MSG, that makes it more cool. And it had a better reason. Especially with the main event being Brock Lesnar Big Show. A match that would have been good in 2003 <laughs> when they were actually in the primes, especially Big Show. But Legend's still priming it. He's still having good matches most of the time. After a little rough start, he's looking good again. Matches against Reigns and his match against Taker. And I'm looking forward to Hell in a Cell now. He's calling it the Go To Hell Tour. That should be Kane's tour name for Seth Rollins. Go To Hell. Anyway, we had a six man tag in hand, and it was a fun six man tag, but she added with the antics of Xavier Woods. Is it just me or Xavier Woods changing his hair a lot? He had the straight hair, he had red hell red highlights last night, and was just just braided, dreaded with a ponytail last tonight on wall. No red highlights tonight. He changes his hairstyle more than Kim Kardashian changes clothes and boyfriends. Well, now that she's got her one guy. Egomania Kanye. Like his music, but he's a dish. Do she bad. Anyway, fun six man tag. Good action there with the isolation of Ziggler in the corner. With Rusev coming with some big moves as well. And Xavier, I love the interaction between Summer Rae and uh, Xavier with Summer playing around with the trombone. And after the isolation of Ziggler after he... Like, the good guys had a little bit of offensive fury until, of course, New Day and Rusev isolated Ziggler in the corner. And despite many opportunities, Ziggler could not get an opportunity to get the tag in. Even at one point, Rusev's like, Tag a guy! Tag a guy! Doink! Kicked him, preventing him from happening. But then Ziggler did get an opening. And got the fresh man in. And that was Bubba Ray coming with a hot tag. Cleaning house, including getting his hands on Kingston and Big E, and maybe have a little show off, showdown, should I say, with Rusev. Especially when he and Devon double suplex Rusev. And they had a uh, they had a uh, Ziggler do the was up from the top. Ziggler woke up doing it. He was like, "Where's that?" Ziggler had used more tongue. He was like, "Where's that?" That's how you do a was up. I don't know why guy's doing it. Bubba Ray does it good. That's how you do it, Ziggler. That's how you probably do a was up. You don't say, was up? You gotta do like, was up? Anyway, after that, after they are was up, they, uh, Xavier Woods looking at the apron. He played the trombone. But for his troubles, he got super kicked from Ziggler. Cool spot when he fell. Silver Ray gladly saved the trouble from falling. But for one super kick, leads to another super kick. As Rusev would capitalize on that distraction to super kick Ziggler in the 1 2 3 victory for Rusev in a new day. With a fun, decent six man tag. So fun interactions between Silver Ray and uh, Xavier was, like I said, in the ringside, especially when. Xavier fell off of the apron after getting super kicked from Ziggler and the trouble being catched by Summer Rae. Save the trombone! Save the trombone! Because I love that. I mean, I'm sounding like a broken record every week. 
that I'm glad New Day is finally getting over his heels. And I love their table for three. Special on the network. Cannot wait for the one with uh, the Divas. And I'm also watching the Bischoff thing. After I'm done with this review, I'm watching the Bischoff interview. So, HG plugs for the network. She expected from a guy who wore a 999 shirt during the Night of Champions review last night. So, there you go. On to our next scenario Divas at Chain. Natalia. I'm glad she's finally back in action. She needs to get a big push again. Please. She needs to be a part of this too. She needs to get it on all the fun. Maybe it's because there is a good reason why she's been out. Her husband's been out with an injury. You know, there's a good reason. But it's just it's not a good enough reason to say that she cannot be involved in this Divas Revolution. And it was a fun match between her and Naomi. Really good athletic matchup that should have been longer, in my opinion. You know, then okay time. And also, the match should have ended more cleaner. Because you had involvement for both Sasha and Tamina helping with the ending. Because Natalia looked good in the early going. With a Catwoman-like suit. I like the suit tonight. She always looks good. She looks good in the ring and out of the ring. Tell that to Tyson Kidd. <sighs> He'll probably tell you that Natalia looks really good outside the ring. We gain focus. Uh, these two are really athletic. They should have had a lot more time. But for the time they had, they, they, they did well with it. But as Natalia was going for the sharpshoot at one point, here comes Tamina and Sasha getting involved in the apron, distracting Natalia long enough for the wheel view to be right in her face. The finishing move for Naomi. And the 1 2 3 victory for Naomi, continuing T Bad's winning streak. We have Sasha winning over Sa Page lately. Adding to the heel turn of Paige, and now Naomi winning against Charlotte's opponent from NXT last year. Now, great women's match last year to take over in May, being the tire. Now, next matchup Cesaro and Big Show. Stemming from Cesaro getting knocked out a few weeks ago after Big Show got involved in the, uh, and Miz got involved in the. Matchup between Big Show and all. I think it was like, no, it was actually it's all with Miz, and then Big Show got involved. He thought that Cesar, Cesar won of revenge. And Big Show wanted to send a message to Brock Lesnar, who they're facing off against each other, as I mentioned, at the MSG special next Saturday on the network. I love the network. I don't care. Yes, they advertise it way too much on the show, but. What diehard fan would not want that network for ten for nine ninety nine a month to get all the pay per views, even though some pay per views may not be good? But again, uh, the man programming and the original programming is amazing. Like I said, the table for three is an awesome show. With the new day was a fun one. Awesome podcast. Come on, Brock Lesnar's on. I can't believe Brock Lesnar. This go to hell tour is going to be an awesome podcast. Shit, that should be interesting because Lesnar rarely does interviews. May not be as good of an interview as Lesnar's advocate, Paul Heyman. But to be, should be a thing. Hopefully Austin grills him on like leaving the company and coming back in the company. Hopefully he really grills him. A lot more than he did add to Christian. Still a fun one, but I wish they should have hit him more questions. Good hard hitting. You know, he did come up the tank division. Despite this, Cesaro's brutal strength and great pushing lately, even in losing effort against Kevin Owens, he's looking good. The Giants look good, even delivering a suplex to Big Show after multiple hits. But Cesaro had battled a bad back. As he was really reeling from a move. He was trying to attack Big Show on the outside. He was looking good out there. Until he got rammed against the wing post. That kind of uh, signaled it. That his back was hurting from that spine hit to the barrack, to the tilt buckle post. To the ring post. And I guess he tried to do the suplex, which he did at the third attempt. But just as quickly, Big Show quickly got back up from that suplex. Knocked the hell out of Cesaro with the WM do weapon and master stretching knockout and one two three victory for Big Show. I love that he's like telling the crowd. Even though he's not a good wrestler as he used to be, he did okay in the matchup though. Cesaro did good with them. I think he suplexed him before at the Under the Giant Battle Royal last year, WrestleMania 30 when he won. That tells us all won the Battle Royal. We should have pushed a lot more last year after that win. When he got Big Show out of the ring by suplexing him off the top, if I'm not mistaken. 
So Pixel grabbed the mic. He's like, boo me. Boo me all you want. I'm sending a message to Brock Lesnar for a match at MSG. Cue the Suplex City champ. Yeah, what? You ain't gonna take me to Suplex City. I'm gonna burn that bitch to the ground. He didn't say, you know what I meant. He said, somewhere along, something along those lines. Now, on to our main event match. The rematch for the U.S. Championship. Seth Rollins trying to regain the second title he had. Taking on John Cena. I uh, like their SummerSlam match. And also like their Nia Champions match. Good chemistry. Good chemistry between both these guys. Probably would have seen this best feud in a while. Even though the booking's been kind of off a little bit. The match is still good. Mind you, when CM Punk wrestled Cena. Their matches were amazing. So was Cena's matches with Edge. There's been some great, great rivalry Cena's had. Owens, another recent one. His match with Wallen, once again, was pretty good. Good action from Wallens. There was some big anti gooey kicks. Big power moves at the top rope. He finally nailed the frog splash. He uh, tried for the frog splash last night during the title match, but he wasn't successful tonight. He was finally successful. But it ended up costing the match, though. For one of us, once again, a clean ending to the match. And Cena tried for his big moves. He had a few multiple times. I like the uh, sequence of events like Cena and Rollins were switching doing their own finishers. Like Cena was doing the FU, went first into the pedigree. They were first back to the FU. So it's kind of like a good little sequence of events. And also, Seth continued trolling Cena by trying to end the match with Cena's own finisher. The SDF then turning into a crossface and Cena powered out of it. It's a fun match with these two guys. Ending with after the Frog Splash, Cena quickly rolled out of it. Turned it right into the F year in the 1 2 3 3 3 for John Cena, regaining, or should I say, regaining the United States Championship. And I was watching it and I was saying to myself, Kane's gonna get involved. Kane's gonna get involved here. Thankfully, Kane didn't get involved until after the match, which I liked. And that's what happened. Corporate Kane came on the screen saying, Hey, Zap, you're gonna be the best WWE champion in the world. Because there's a lot of guys lining up, including some you will, you could never imagine. Then he had a sinister look in his face. Boom, here comes the Demon King. Under the ring! Yes, he came under the ring, trying to pull Seth into the ring. And Seth tried to power out of it. But there was no escape as Cade pulled Seth Rollins straight to hell. Oh, under the ring. Smoke came out of the ring as we end wall with the sight of Wells being pulled under the ring by Demon Kane with the mind games continuing to distract Wallace. Wallace got a lot of people gunning for him, not just Sheamus, but now Demon Kane, who Cobra Kane doesn't know, attacked Wallace. That game's gonna get old very quickly because the Joseph Park and Biss gimmick got old very quickly. If they keep going with this way with Stephen Kane coming out and Corporate Kane not knowing anything about it, even though he's the same fucking guy. It's gonna get old, like I said, quick. Even if they're booking Demon Kane against Wallens, possibly for the title at Hell in a Cell. It should be in Hell in a Cell. Cause sometimes they have two Hell in a Cell sometimes. But here's my opinion for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Don't do more than one. Cause if you do more than one, it's gonna take away from it. And it's going to get to the comparison. It's like doing two million in banks every year when they used to have two titles. And have the WWE title held in a cell. Not the, you know, but the WWE title money in the bank match. And the one title money in the bank match. One match will always outshine the other. It will be better than the other one. That's why they should not do two held in a cell matches. Just have one held in a cell match. Especially when that one held in a cell match is Undertaker against Brock Lesnar. Please no screwy ending. No cut the pussy ending. Let this match end fucking clean. Let this be the indeed final chapter here. Please clear winner. No bullshit. No fucked up endings. No miss referee calls. No nothing. Clean fight. And I do mean fight because they're going to use weapons. Because it's hell in a cell. No DQ and stuff. So that is it. 
for the uh, WWE Wall Review for tonight. Thank you very much again for watching. That mind you wouldn't act by the review from Zach. See you later, everybody. Yeah.